Welcome to Honky Tonk Heroes, Volume 2. In today's episode of Eclectic American Roots, we return to that rich vein of honky-tonk gold. Where did all this great music start? Texas troubadour Ernest Tubb had his biggest hit, Walk in the Floor, in 1941, just prior to World War II. We'd like to introduce a man who has become a legend in his own time, the Texas troubadour Ernest Tubb. Just keep right on walking and it won't hurt you to cry. Remember that I love you and I will the day I die. It brought a fresh sound to country music. No longer was hillbilly, folk, and mountain music limited to string bands. All over America, people embraced the honky-tonk beat of electric guitar, drums, and pedal steel. On radio, in taverns, and on jukeboxes everywhere, honky-tonk music began to thrive. After all, depressing lyrics about drinking and cheating paired with cheerful, upbeat tunes is what honky-tonk music is all about. When we dance together, my world's in disguise. It's a fairyland tale that's come true. And when you look at me with those stars in your eyes, could waltz across Texas with you. Ernest Tubb became famous as the Texas Troubadour, but was also playing country music as far back as the 1930s. Tubb put the Western into country and Western and introduced the world to honky-tonk music. This is his story. As a teenager, Ernest Tubb was obsessed with the world's first country star, Jimmy Rogers and he wanted to become the next singing brakeman. So he learned to play and sing and yodel. And to salute his idol, here's the Texas Troubadour, a Hall of Famer himself, Ernest Tubb. He's in the jailhouse now. He's in the jailhouse now. Told him once or twice to quit playing cards and shooting dice. He's in the jailhouse now. Tubbs' world was shattered when his hero died in 1933. In 34, the young Ernest Tubbs started a daily 15 minute show on KONO radio in Texas playing live. Rogers. Jimmy Rogers' widow, Carrie, heard him perform her late husband's music and let him know she wanted to help. You sound so much like Jimmy, she said. Uh, a little too much like Jimmy, however. She told him, Ernest, Jimmy is dead and gone. You have to sound like yourself. Ernest Tubb. Mrs. Rogers even bought Ernest a tuxedo and gave him Jimmy's famed D45 guitar. She even booked him a tour and capped it with a record deal at RCA Victor. She had some faith in me and uh was instrumental in helping me get started. In fact, I owe everything to Mrs. Rogers that I've gained in the country music business. Like Bob Wills and other country stars in the 1940s, E.T. appeared in a couple of B-Westerns in Hollywood. I'm walking the floor over you. Where's McBride? I can't sleep away. I say, where's McBride? Through. I'm hoping and I'm praying my heart breaks right in two. Where's that Walking McBride? The Stop it. Over you guys have a wounded man in here? We like to sing. All right, Tommy Tucker. Let's hear how you sing for your supper. Okay, just lend an ear. I saw you out. 
the other night You know you should have been in bed Now you say that we are through And good gal, I'm telling you You hit the nail right on the head This is WSM Nashville, Tennessee Presenting the Grand Old Up With his success in movies and on radio, Tubb was invited to become a member of the Grand Ole Opry in 1943, and he remained until 1982. My first great thrill was meeting Mrs. Rogers and getting to play Jimmy Rogers' guitar, you know. The next, of course, was hearing the record. The next is when I walked out on the stage at the Grand Ole Opry. Now here is Ernest Tubb. He performed live on the Opry every other Saturday, once driving a thousand miles to make the gig. Back then, the Grand Ole Opry didn't have any Western stars, much less those who had made Hollywood movies or were on nationwide jukeboxes. And of course, they loved E.T.'s great cowboy suits. E.T.'s honky-tonk sound was wildly popular, and he was the first entertainer to add the electric guitar to the Grand Ole Opry. to slip around to be with you my dear slipping around afraid we might be found I know I can't forget you and I've got to have you near but we just have to slip around and live in constant fear In 1947, he had the honor of headlining the first Grand Ole Opry show at Carnegie Hall in New York City. Also in 1947, the Ernest Tubb Record Shop opened near the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville. This is way before Nashville became a tourist destination. 1947, in Nashville, Tennessee, a show went on the air called the Midnight Jamboree. That old Texas troubadour Broadcast from his record shop Now on the wide world old E.T. started his Midnight Jamboree radio broadcast at the record shop which followed the Grand Ole Opry late on Saturday nights. He gave every artist who came to Nashville airtime and encouragement, still paying it back to Mrs. Jimmy Rogers. In 1954, the prolific Western swing songwriter, Cindy Walker, wrote Two Glasses, Joe, and E.T. recorded them to great success. Set up two glasses, Joe, and turn the jukebox low, and let me sit and reminisce. I've been writing songs to make my living since I was 12 years old, you know. And Ernest Tubb, if there was anybody in the business he understood people, and he loved them. Set up two glasses, Joe, and turn the jukebox low, and let me sit and reminisce. While I pretend that she is sitting here with me, the way she did not long ago. Tubb loved touring and was on the road over 300 dates a year. And now here he is, the Texas troubadour, Ernest Tubb. Don't ever kiss no one but me. If you do, dear, you'll break my heart. It's not because I doubt you, but I'm such a fool about you. I've got a jealous loving heart. Beginning in the fall of 1965, E.T. hosted a half-hour TV program, The Ernest Tubb Show. It aired 130 episodes over three years. One of its weekly performers was a young Willie Nelson. As rock and roll became dominant, E.T. never wanted to change his honky-tonk sound. 
But even the Beatles were big Ernest Tubb fans. After a Beatles concert in Los Angeles, Ringo raced to see Ernest Tubb perform a set at the Palomino. He got backstage, but was too starstruck to say a word, and E.T. simply patted Ringo on the head as he passed by. By 1965, when he was inducted to the Country Music Hall of Fame, Ernest Tubb really was country music. For a man who idolized Jimmy Rogers as much as he did, he could never comprehend that was the same feeling his millions of fans had toward him. Why did I choose Ernest Tubb to pay tribute to? As a country music fan in 1982, I personally got to see E.T. perform in a high school auditorium near Kalamazoo on one of his last tours. The show was unforgettable as his Texas troubadours were always top notch. True to his reputation, E.T. came out to sign after the show. He seemed a bit frail and I asked him how he was holding up, touring all the time at his age. Ernest said, son, it's not the age, it's the mileage. I shook his very large hand and I told him I had really enjoyed the show. And do you know what he said? Thanks. Thanks a lot, I got a broken heart, that's all I've got. You made me cry, and I cried a lot. I lost your love, baby, thanks a lot. Told our friend, as I was passing by, that you're not sorry, that you made me cry. Said I deserve just what I got. Well, if that's how you feel, honey, thanks a lot.